The breathtaking Atlantic Ocean, lush subtropical forests, an estuary teeming with life. This is John D. MacArthur Beach State Park. At a time when natural areas along South Florida's coast are increasingly rare, MacArthur Beach State Park stands out as an island in time. It's a hidden gem of Palm Beach County, showcasing what Florida looked like hundreds of years ago and providing visitors with a rare glimpse into the real Florida. Protected by the Florida Park Service, this land will remain preserved for future generations to enjoy. The park covers 436 acres of subtropical coastal habitats, bordered on one side by the Atlantic Ocean and separated from the mainland by the Lake Worth Lagoon. Contained within its borders is a unique and complex mix of environments. A living resource permanently preserved. A remarkable 1.6 mile stretch of beach and dunes forms a physical barrier, protecting the mainland from storms. Further inland is the maritime hammock, mangrove forest, and estuary. John D. MacArthur Beach State Park is a safe haven for many species of wildlife, including many that are endangered and threatened. One of them, the Florida manatee, is an occasional visitor. Another is the sea turtle. MacArthur Beach is an important nesting site for loggerheads, as well as green and leatherback sea turtles. It is one of the few remaining beaches where they can nest undisturbed. All creatures on land and sea are part of a complex network, each one having an important role to play in their ecosystem. The park is carefully managed to forever maintain the fascinating environment of the barrier island and its surrounding waterways, preserving one of the most biologically diverse natural areas in Palm Beach County. The beach and dune habitat is an ever-changing environment under continual pressure from water and wind. The physical forces that shape and reshape our coastline. The sands of MacArthur Beach shift in a seasonal cycle of change. The winter months bring stronger winds and higher waves, which moves sand offshore. This is called erosion. The summer months bring gentler winds and calm seas, which return the sand back to shore. This is called deposition. Human activity can also influence the erosion of coastlines. For instance, it is important to use the staircases provided to access the beach and not walk over the dune itself. Foot traffic can cause unnecessary erosion, as well as damage to the organisms that live on the dune. One of the most critical parts of the beach and dune ecosystem is the plant life. During heavy storms, sand from the barrier islands can be rapidly swept out to sea. However, if a dune has enough vegetation to anchor the sand in place, it aids in the island's ability to buffer the elements. In contrast to islands that have been built upon in other areas, the sands of MacArthur Beach are free to move following their natural patterns. Even though the beach is one of the most dynamic and challenging environments to survive in, many plants and animals have adapted to live here. These shorebirds are searching for food, tiny crustaceans and mollusks that live off organic matter deposited by the waves. Just beyond the high tide mark, plants stabilize the sand. And when these pioneer plant species move in, the backbone of a barrier island begins to form. Burrowing four o'clock is one of the park's endangered plant species. Its leaves hold the sand while the roots bind it together. Another colonizing species is railroad vine. Plants like these are able to withstand exposure to intense sunlight, strong winds, and salt spray. They are hardy survivors, well equipped with waxy leaves to prevent them from drying out. They pave the way for other plants, allowing dune habitation to begin. Trees like the sea grape are a great example of plants that have adapted to live in this environment. 
grasses like sea oats are also beach plants, along with Spanish bayonet, dune sunflowers, and the sweet-smelling spider lily. As the dune builds and increases in height, it becomes a windbreak so that on the backside, in more sheltered conditions, shrubs and taller trees can take hold. This dense stand of plants and trees found on and near the barrier island is known as a maritime hammock. It is one of the park's most remarkable features. As this subtropical forest habitat once covered much of coastal southeast Florida. Being oceanfront land, the hammock would normally be vulnerable to development, but in the park, it is protected. The park boasts one of the most pristine remaining representations of maritime hammock in Palm Beach County. The hammock exists because the natural dune provides protection from the wind and wave action of the beach just a few feet away. In this forest, natural plant succession reaches full maturity, a process that takes hundreds of years to complete. It is the combination of species that make the hammock so special. Among the trees we find here are gumbo limbo, sable palm, sea grape, and the strangler fig. Strangler figs are trees that often germinate high in the branches of other trees and wrap around them for support as its roots grow down to the soil. Together, all the trees of the hammock form a dense canopy where many birds and animals find shade, shelter, and food. Many animals call the hammock habitat home like this red rat snake. This is one of many different reptiles found here. There are many species of spiders and butterflies. The dense undergrowth provides a perfect hiding place for many animals. Gopher tortoises often explore the hammock looking for food. As we move further back from the ocean toward the estuary's edge, we find trees with a magnificent tangle of roots. These are mangroves. Mangrove trees are critical to the health of our coastal habitats. They provide food and shelter for numerous species of animals, those on land, in the water, and in the air. Mangroves also help protect Florida's coastlines. These trees prevent erosion and help absorb the impacts of dangerous storm surges from extreme weather events. A unique adaptation of mangroves is their ability to survive in saltwater environments. Three species of mangroves are found in Florida, white, black, and red. We usually find the red mangrove growing right along the water's edge. It can be identified by its unique red-colored root structure. The roots of red mangroves support the trees above the water like legs. This has earned them the nickname walking trees. They form a dense, tangled habitat that might appear impenetrable to people, but for a raccoon, it provides perfect cover. Fiddler and mangrove crabs live in the leaf litter that collects around the mangrove roots. As leaves decompose and sediment builds up further inland, the slight increase in elevation that results is favored by the black mangrove tree. In order to take in carbon dioxide above the thick mud and detritus, black mangroves have porous vertical roots called pneumatophores. White mangroves prefer still higher ground. The seeds of white, black, and red mangroves may look different, but all mangroves multiply by the same means. Seeds develop while still on the tree. They then drop into the water where they are carried along waterways by currents and tides. Red mangrove seeds are particularly well adapted. Bottom heavy, their pointed ends sink easily into the soft dirt or mud of a suitable place for them to take root. The waters of the estuary are an ideal home for many aquatic creatures. Here in this vital habitat, fresh and salt water mix, creating a brackish environment, which is an essential feeding and nursery ground for many marine creatures. Most fishes and crustaceans begin their lives here in this protected area before swimming out to the ocean. Conch snails are also common residents of the estuary. These waters are murky, not from pollution, but because they are full of nutrients. 
The tide washes both nutrients and fishes from the estuary into the ocean twice a day. Oysters that grow among mangrove roots help to clean the water by filtering out excess nutrients, plankton, and algae. One oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water per day. These shelled creatures become exposed when the tide goes out. As they close to prevent from drying out, they make a noticeable popping sound. Without the estuary, an important resource for marine life would disappear. The underwater boundaries of MacArthur Beach State Park extend from the estuary out to Munion Island in the Lake Worth Lagoon, another important part of this marine ecosystem. In these deeper waters, manatees come to feed off seagrass and vegetation that lies on the bed of the lagoon. Manatees are gentle sea mammals with no natural form of defense. Unfortunately, human-related activities can cause harm. This manatee bears the scars of an encounter with a boat propeller. Luckily, its tough skin helped this individual survive. Protected sections of the lagoon in the park offer manatees a refuge from the hazards they face elsewhere. Aquatic animals are not the only ones who benefit from the estuary. At low tide, mud flats appear in some areas of these shallow waters, which provide a key feeding ground for birds. The park hosts a wide array of birds within each habitat. The great blue heron is a skilled hunter in the estuary. The red-bellied woodpecker makes its home in the hammock. Some of the park's birds are seasonal visitors. Others, like the brown pelican, live here all year round. Both the pelican and the osprey divide their fishing expeditions between the estuary and the ocean reef. Made up of Anastasia limestone, the reef at MacArthur Beach is a rocky outcropping that slopes from the beach into the sea. The ocean's reefs are an essential marine habitat and also protect coastlines from storms and erosion. A kaleidoscope of colorful tropical fishes and many other ocean creatures take refuge here. One may even catch an occasional glimpse of a sea turtle, perhaps one nearing the end of a journey that has brought her across hundreds of miles of ocean to MacArthur Beach. She waits until nightfall to come ashore, laying her eggs undisturbed. These images were taken under a state permit that allows for a special close-up viewing of this protected species. Sea turtles are very sensitive to man-made light. A night viewing device was used to prevent any lights from frightening her away. Once she has chosen a site, it may take a loggerhead an hour or more to dig her nest. On average, 2,000 to 3,000 sea turtle nests are counted each year at MacArthur Beach. This is one of the highest density sea turtle nesting sites in Florida. This loggerhead sea turtle will lay well over 100 eggs in her nest. Her job done, she returns to the sea. Sea turtles will usually lay multiple nests in a single season, and then not again for two to three years. About two months later, the turtles' hatchlings are ready to make their trek to the sea. Those that survive may return to the area when they are mature, in about another 20 to 30 years. Unlike many of Florida's other beaches, which are becoming increasingly developed, MacArthur Beach will be virtually unchanged when they return. The dunes of the park may migrate, the populations of its different species may rise or fall, but the park's resilient wildlife will continue to respond to natural changes in the environment around them. John D. MacArthur Beach State Park will remain intact, protected, and preserved. It is an island in time, changing at nature's pace, a remarkable resource for our future, and a haven for the many plants and animals that thrive in the real Florida.